What is going on everybody? We are here today. We're going to be doing our instructor series. We're back with Rick Silva and honestly, I can honestly say this is probably one of the most important videos from an instruction standpoint. If you're truly serious about getting better at golf, I can honestly say this is one of the best videos that you could watch. Not only are there going to be a lot of short game concepts that again, Rick has access to some technology that, you know, I don't have access to. Not many people actually have access to. He has one of three three systems in the entire country uh, actually i think the entire world that has access to the data that he has so the stuff that he talks about when you're putting you know information together and trying to put it into a practical way he is really really good at that um, there are also going to be some ideas here that just don't exactly you know apply only to short game i mean they can be something you take away through your full swing as well so again just wanted to hop on it's a very important video i know it's short game and that's not everybody's thinking hey that's the most exciting thing but if you really want to get better and shoot lower scores and have uh your goals broken this summer then I think this is one you're going to want to watch, study, save, and keep going over and trying as you get outside. So without further ado, let's head to Highland Park. Hey everybody, Scott Hogan coming at you. We are doing our instructor series again. We are here in Highland Park, Illinois. We are visiting with Rick Silva, PGA member, here at Movement 3 Golf and True Spec awesome facility here rick is a fantastic instructor golf digest best in state golf magazine top teachers to watch jacobs 3d tpi i mean a lot of stuff that i'm going to list all down here below he has a great resume and that's why we're here to talk to him today and today we're going to talk a little bit about short game so this is something that i know i'm super interested in and what i love about what you do and what you do with jacobs 3d is you talk a lot about kinetics and how the club is supposed to move but you also do a little bit of work with hey this is how the ball is supposed to work too and things yeah. like that so you combine kind of the best of both worlds along with true spec doing the club fitting stuff like that you're able to really help people understand how that short game is supposed to work which i think is really helpful for people so let's talk a little bit about when you have somebody that's coming in i, I have so many people that get a launch monitor nowadays right they're becoming more and more accessible and then they say all right i want to improve my game i think as teachers we know you work on your short game that could be a very very big help to your scores yeah but what are some things from let's just start with the ball and like if you're hitting shots on a launch monitor what would be kind of a key thing you're looking for in the short game for people or wedges i guess yeah. uh, as they're hitting some shots so well first thing uh with the offerings that we have with my brand partner, TrueSpec, you know, and the stuff that I get to learn, I, and I'm not the club fitter, I, you know, I, I just get to hang around one of the best club fitters that I've ever been around, you know, my partner here at Carmen. So, you know, the stuff that I get to learn every single day about how shafts get to work and how bounces, you know, interact with turf, um, you know, it's, it's phenomenal and we can take that information and overlay that with technology that I'm fortunate enough to, to have and to play a role with uh, gears and mm -hmm. my brand relationship with with Foresight Sports so taking all of that I'd say the, the most fundamental thing as simple as it may s seem and sound would be well quality of face contact right you know um, the engineering on golf clubs, you know, I'm sitting here holding a, you know, a, a brand new Titleist SM9, mm -hmm. you know, and how they've designed these things in the engineering. When we look at the best players in the world and they're hitting wedge shots, you know, where are they hitting wedge shots partially and why, mm -hmm. you know? So they tend to be a little bit more, you know, on the toe or toward the toe so they can you know, be a little bit more aggressive, but the ball won't speed up. Right. Right, so the, you know, overarching point, if you put it over here, would be, you know, the point in wedge play is that we want to slow the ball down, not actually speed it up like a driver. Right. So the opposite ends of, of you know, the book ends, so to speak. Right. right. So I think that's really critical. We want to hit it, you know, middle of the face to slightly toward the toe okay. so that the ball actually has a consistent pace to it. It's not going to like you know, jump on us, 
Mm -hmm. um, the bounce or the soul interaction, how it moves through the turf, because make no mistake, it needs to move through the turf. Right. I would say the everyday impassioned golfer gets a little skittish of it entering the turf. Right. Right. Um, and this becomes a really important thing of how to control the speed, how to control the speed of the arms, how to control the speed of the golf club. So I would say those those three elements are fundamental, for lack of a better term. Okay. So we're going through. You, we got to slow the ball down. Is there numbers that you're looking at that would you say would be ideal for people to kind of strive for? Let's say you're hitting a 40-yard shot. You yeah. Know, for what they're doing. Um, you know, one of the I think a, using launch monitors. You know, you know, my my brand of choice is you know foresight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a you know couple GC quads here. Mm -hmm. You know, but <clears throat> if if we're hitting a 40-yard shot, the ball speed number um, would be right in and around that same number. So 40-yard shot, 40 miles an hour, I think is a wonderful you know, window to strive for. Okay. So we wouldn't see like excessive accelerating or decelerating patterns. Okay, and so obviously you said that contact has a big impact on that. You know, hey, that's why we want to see it out towards the toe. You, you don't necessarily have to hit it dead center on these shots. You don't. And the, the reason being it's out on the toe is, is the engineering, they would put, you know, weighting factors on that so you wouldn't see, you know, the club like buckle open or yeah. things of that nature. Gotcha. And it's, an, it, like I said, it's in an effort to actually keep it, you know, constant. Right. That it wouldn't like explode. Gotcha. Yeah. So we start with that, okay, so we say, all right, hey, your contact and paying attention to where that is, and you have a goal in mind of, all right, let's try to hit a shot of this distance. And All right, so we're gonna wrap it up there distance. with the short game video. We've got more with Rick coming up, so don't miss out on that. But again, some key things there, just understanding how to control your distance. I love the part about putting speed into the backswing because you don't want to make that forward swing so uncontrollably fast that it starts throwing everything off. You're trying to pick up speed while maintaining that nice controlled ratio of how that swing is going through back and through when you're hitting these shots so if you have questions please leave comments down below again i think this is a video you're going to want to watch a couple of times and get out on your practice short game areas trying out it's going to be really really important i think so if you have questions please leave comments down below thank you again for tuning in and as always please Click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.